Hi there, and welcome to this episode of Totally Unscripted, where we are um, totally unscripted. So, um, best laid plans have um, been torn up again uh, for the, the, <laughs> the second chariot in the row. So, we were hoping to have um, Real Notterman from Zaps ML uh, join us to talk about um, some of the work he's done with um, cloud functions, and um, he was actually using Firebase cloud functions. Um, he's not been able to make it today, but um, I've just finished um, a pre-record with him. So we're going to release that as part of the the show. So you you'll get it in from the site, and we'll we'll add it um, in various places on Plus and so on. Um, I have to say, having not really looked at Cloud Functions, it's an excellent session if you want to start using Cloud Functions with your App Script projects, because um, Real does an excellent job of just talking through. How, how you set these up and what you can do. So um, stay tuned for that one. Um, in terms of news, um, so uh, there, there have been a couple of um, uh, issues in, in the bug tracker. Um, so I know, Steve, that you've logged one of these um, related to um, add-ons not, not appearing. Do you, do you want to just um, talk a bit more to that one? Sure. Um, basically, I will get feedback from users saying, when I click on your, or when I click on the add-on menu, it drops down with all the installed add-ons. And then from there, you have a sub-menu that occurs on the right side. <clears throat> Pardon me. And that's where sometimes your menu that you've developed is missing. It will have the uh, default or, or what's provided by Google, the help, but nothing else. So there's nothing to click to use your add-on. So I've been noticing an increase of that happening, happening randomly. So that means the more installs you have for a given add-on, the greater chance you may get feedback of something's missing. So Google just acknowledged it just before this broadcast, and they're looking into it. OK, and I'm just putting the ticket um, uh, into the chat, and we'll include that in the show notes. So hopefully that one gets resolved quickly, because obviously yeah. that's going to cause up um, quite a bit of pain for people. Yeah. Um, one other thing I'll add into the show notes is um, just looking at some of the um, things that have been released by the community. So um, Spencer Easton has done a really nice um, library for XML parsing. So there is an XML service within the script. Um, but um, it doesn't handle lenient parsing at all. So if the XML is malformed in some way, you just can't do anything with it. So um, Spencer has actually um, taken an existing library, tweaked it slightly, uh, and, and published, that, published that as a library. So if you're working with XML, or you used to work with XML and got completely frustrated by what was possible in that script, that, that was me. Um, Looking at Spencer's library is well worth that. So he shared that on the Google Plus um, App Script community, and we'll again we'll include uh, a link in the show notes so you can have a look at that. Um, I've been tracking the Firebase channel uh, that YouTube or that Google provides, and then from that I've been creating my own. Uh, playlist that focuses on cloud functions, which is kind of like the theme that we're having here. So there's actually nine Google videos that I found that mentions or talks about cloud functions. So we can share this uh, after a meeting, the, uh, the, the public address here. Um, so that's what I wanted to make everyone aware. It's good reading. I did it in order of date. So they start off with an introduction and go through certain examples. They answer questions that people have had about it and so forth. And that is it. It's, um, it was funny because when I was doing the section with um, uh, Real, he, he mentioned the fact that there's lots of videos. And I, it seems they've gone video heavy. And that I'm, I'm guessing the documentation backs it up. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Hi there. Welcome, everyone, to this um, pre-recorded session of Totally Unscripted, um, where I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Will Nottman from Zaps NL, um, who's going to talk about cloud functions with Firebase. Hello, Will. Hey, Martin. 
<laughs> nice to finally be here <laughs> and to well, talk a bit about. Yeah, it's great to have you. So um, on previous shows, we've we've mentioned um, uh, Google Cloud Functions and Cloud Functions for Firebase, but we haven't had any kind of um, information detail. So it's great that you've been able to uh, spare some time to um, to share. So what can you enlighten us about um, uh, Cloud Functions for Firebase? Yeah, you, you all know I've I've, I've been working with Fscript for a few years now and and I really love love Fscript like probably most of the people that are watching this show right now um, but recently these cloud functions came up especially cloud functions for Firebase and the normal Google cloud functions and starting to play with them as well made me just as enthusiastic about them as I am about uh, Google Apps Script so I think that did you people also like to know what they're about what they can do how they are different from Google Apps Script um, they're a bit they are not as easy to set up but once you've done it a few times it's it's all quite simple so what I want to show you is how you can use these two at the same time so do something with Fscript and have a limit and especially I want to show something with URL fetch app which has this annoying 100 megabyte <laughs> limit show sh I'll show you what the problem is with it and how I made a small solution just for the case of demonstration because I'm not really sure how to use it or, or why you want to use it in real time, but for demonstration, how to fetch some bigger files, but use cloud functions to do this for you. Um, I prepared it, I tested it all, and it worked. So as I think that the route that I took to make it work, I will try to do it live now <laughs> on screen. So try to keep up, follow up, and uh, if, if something is unclear, then, then let me know, and I'll try to do a step back. I think most of the people don't really know what cloud functions are, but I think they are in a way comparable to Google Apps Script in, in, in the way that it's just a small function that runs in the cloud, <laughs> hence the name, uh, and that, 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 that can be triggered on different ways. And the easiest way to trigger this function is just as, uh, as Google Apps Script, as a, a URL. You call the URL, the function starts rolling and does something and results something to you. So this is this is what a, a cloud function does. The nice thing about these Firebase functions is that they not only can respond on HTTP triggers, but also on a, a pub sub channel that can set up, think of something change on a drive file or something change on Gmail. <clears throat> and also it can trigger on Firebase events. So when you put something in the database, you can have a whole function do some special tricks with it, return something to the database, or call other services. Just think it's 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 a bit like the glue in the in the cloud, what App Script is for the G Suite the kind of things. But it's really nice nice to play with, um, and they are a bit more powerful because one main advantage is you can actually pay for it and exceed some limits <coughs> that you might run into with. Like with App Script, so um, I want to show you how to set up a function. I want to show you uh, a little trick how you can do this with all some free tools that are available online. Um, I want to show you the Google Cloud Shell that I've been testing them with. I am using C9.io, which is a really cool web development environment where you can easily deploy cloud functions. But I found that Google has something hidden in the in the Cloud Console that you can just fire up and and uh, install your functions. So I, I will go with you through this process to create these functions. And um, let's go. I, I did some preparation, so I tried to do the step back and do them again. So we'll see. Now, first, let's go to the problem I created. So we have a function here, and it wants to fetch this image. And this is a 100 MB image. So I was trying to see how, how what the length is, and if I if I look this one, it will say it's about 100 MB, I think. But when I add the file back to drive, it will show up as a 10 megabyte file. And this, this is the reason URL fetch app can only fetch a file of 10 megabytes, and it's mostly a problem for most users to hit a, hit a limit on URL fetch app because at 100 MB, then it's not working anymore. So what? What can you do if you want to use a file of 100 MB? So what I really want to do is to fetch from a function. To actually call a function, tell the function to fetch a file from me, and fetch the file from me, and actually let the function put the file from me in drive and send back the drive ID so 
I can use the file in Google Apps Script afterwards. So to, to create a function, you need an environment that runs Node.js, and the functions are also written in, in Node.js. So if you're not really familiar with it, it's, it's maybe a bit steep to, to get a hang of it because Google Apps Script is a lot easier, and for Node, you have to do some initial setup. But in the end, the language is, you are writing is also JavaScript, and mm -hmm. I think once you, you are starting to work with it, it all makes sense. It's, it has a bit of different rules, some, some different things that you should care about, like installing some dependencies. Think of it like uh, adding some libraries here. I, I imagine this is in Dutch, but you know what's here. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> and a note you also. So the main thing I do is I, I go to to console, a cloud platform project. Usually I go through this route because then I don't have to type the whole URL. And I also have created a, a, a project here, Cloud Functions Demo. So when I go to the Google Cloud Platform down here, is it can you can you see this? Yeah. Okay. We have this little icon on top here. And this is the Google Cloud Shell. And actually this this gives you a, a, a Linux environment. <laughs> with most of the Google uh, yeah. stuff installed already. Yeah. And I'm not really sure if Firebase was installed because when I looked, it was installed, but it can be, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's user-based. So it's one session for you as a logged-in user and it seems like there is some persistent storage there where some stuff keeps being here. So you're starting a shell and here we are and we are in the cloud shell. Some people might be familiar with this some people maybe a bit less, but you really need a shell if you want to use Firebase. So actually, if we go to the Firebase console, that's Firebase. And um, you can create a Google a new project here. I had created a project, but for the case of this, I will add a new project here in Firebase. I will call it live functions demo <coughs> that we are in Netherlands. It's on Google Cloud Functions and you have the Firebase Cloud Functions which are called Cloud Functions for Firebase. So are <laughs> so they separate things then? Is that something? People. No, no, not really. They, they are in the bank. They are exactly the same because when you create yeah. functions on Firebase, you can also see them in your Google Cloud Functions console. Right. Uh, the main difference is that they use a different SDK, as they call it. So you use right. a different set of tools to deploy them. Okay. And actually, actually, I'm I like the Firebase set of tools more than the Cloud Functions mm -hmm. tool. And these were the first I was I was using, and I also use them to for my Firebase database stuff so i i was stuck with i got stuck yeah. with the firebase uh, tools nice and i think to work in the same environment if you use yeah the absolutely and, and actually i like the firebase layout and the firebase views a lot better than the google cloud views i think it's just a matter of taste so um, when we go back to the to the shell and we want to say we go to firebase functions here they probably you can say just let's go and it asks you to install the Firebase tools. Well, for the sake of it, I'll just do it mm -hmm. in my console to install the Firebase tools. I'm, I know they have to be upgraded here, so they probably just update. And you see, so you, you, you thinking... don't need anything else. You just can start use this in your in your console. And you, you think you might only need to do this once? Yeah. Um, yes. And you don't. Once you've done it once for one project, it seems to be there for all the others. Or do you need, need to do it for each pro, um, console project you set up? No, 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 you can do it. it it's persistent. As okay. far as I know. 
you see I get a I think I get a great error message here so I think it's a bit out of scope to see what's happening now <coughs> but if you have done this and it should work then you should be able to run the firebase command yes it's it's working so it's yeah. installed here that's just so we have installed firebase tools and then we have to do two things we can use firebase in it to initialize your firebase tools for this project so let's just do that firebase in it and then you get this this nice user interface and you can say what what do you actually want to use now I say I want to use functions mm -hmm. and it will just set up your environment to use firebase functions here it sees that we already have a project uh, uh, set up but it will ask you for a project now you choose your project and then you you're good to go so for now I want to switch projects because I just created another one and I say it should be live functions demo and I don't want to use an alias now live And if you don't have a, a function, I go now to the to the functions folder. So actually, what you want to do now <laughs> is you want to create, you want to write a function. It's just a file with some mm -hmm. with some uh, data, and upload it to Firebase functions. Let's create a file. Maybe that's the better start. So if you, you there is some a code editor available here, and I found it's really nice in the cloud shell. So it's easy to just stay in there and use the tools that are available and you see files here and there is this option launch code editor so I'm launching it and it will start uh, and you can compare this with the Google Apps scripts editing tool so you see my my folder that I'm in here you see a folder functions note modules yeah. that are installed and some other files and these files are the same as if, if we list if we list the folder right here <laughs> you see these are the same files so this is this is my environment now this is the functions directory and I actually created a function that's called index.js and you you need one function that is called index.js and you see right. this is a whole lot of of code so I'm going to make a new one so is the copy. index.js just created for you when you create the project no it's not created for you you, you need to create right. one yourself so this is a file I'm going to create a new file in here and I call it index 3.js so we have an empty file right now so if you want to create a function you should initialize it with some sort of trigger and you can see them in the documentation here if you if you want but for now I'm going I think I'm going to skip that part I just um, let you know all functions have a have, uh, start with exports then mm -hmm. your function name and this is the trigger that you want to do and functions that HTTPS that on request actually is the same as your let's say your do post or do get function in Google Apps script right so actually when I'm going to deploy a functions.https on request <coughs> on Firebase functions, it will return to me an URL that is the URL of my project with slash on sort to fetch. So it's quite easy to later know what URL is calling what function. And you can create a lot of these um, separate from each other. So this is answer the fetch this is a like demo and just not two might be enough for now so this function is not doing anything but we need some some more installation here to actually start a firebase function and this is these are called some modules that we need to load and I think for the first time you're it's something like uh, I, I don't really get it but this is how node works every um, module you want to use you have to load it in in your index file and you see that I'm, I already did some stuff here for Firebase functions and using the Firebase database uh, the, the admin and the functions are 
needed. But I, are we going to use this one? So we have a function and we require Firebase functions. So we can actually have, you see this functions call is calling. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. so HTTPS um, uh, method is available because you load the Firebase functions into the functions constant. constant. Um, probably this is this is enough for now to have it actually work. Now this is uh, exports. Uh, the only request is some some uh, Express Notes JS. You, I think you can look up in the Express documentation what you can do with it. But you get a request, and the URL parameters are uh, request dot query, and you have request dot body for do post parameters, and the rest is the response that you are going to send back. So if we just respond with resp dot send, oh, okay. Then we probably should be able to get a response that says all oh, okay. We have to make sure uh, for this on request functions that we always do a res dot send because otherwise the function will time out in a minute and will mm -hmm. not stop running. All oh, okay, two. So these are two functions here in index three tips. Let's go back to my cloud shell because my file is ready. I think it's it's ready to to deploy, and let's see how if this is all that we need to do. I really wonder, by the way, if, if it was so easy. <laughs> if I'm not forgetting something, you can still follow it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, I go to the functions uh, directory. The idea is that you have a, a function folder and, uh, and and use your put your index files in there. Um, now I have to. The original index file that I had, I move it to yes, and I the one that I actually created. Okay. Yeah. So, I, so my index file is now just close this one. So if you have installed these Firebase modules and you are using these modules, and now we have this Firebase. Uh, functions, and this this is what you do with all node projects that you are using. You do npm install Firebase functions and save. And actually, what it's what it's doing, it will install for you these functions stuff, put them in a in a nodes folder. And actually, when you upload a function, it uploads also all these modules that you are in, that you need to run. Think of it like the libraries for Google Apps Script. That you will add to your project, but you add the libraries that you are going to use in your function as well, and upload them. We use save because this is this is quite important, and I, I think, very experienced Node developers think it's it's logical, but I, I wasn't that this kind of person. <laughs> uh, save uh, creates a package.json file. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, and I, it actually lists all the dependencies that your functions are going to use. So I, for my demonstration, I had, I had installed a lot of other stuff here, but you see that the Firebase function is already added here. Mm -hmm. And Google needs this file as well to know what modules that are installed. Now, deploying the functions is actually Firebase deploy. And what I do is only functions. Because if you deploy everything, then it looks for hosting and database rules as well and stuff like that. Right. But I do Firebase deploy only functions. And let's hope that I'll just wait for a bit. You see it's creating two functions, answer mm -hmm. the fetch, and it's creating my demo. Ah, and there we go. Mm -hmm. So we have we get we get a result. It gets a link to your project console. Let's refresh this one now. Uh, live functions demo functions, and here they are listed. Two functions: my function on to the fetch mm -hmm. and function my demo. And there is a URL here. So let's just open the URL. See what it does. Ha! All okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my demo. Should say allocate to. Mm -hmm. So this is very very much comparable with uh, with uh, 
Google Apps Script, I guess. Yeah. So, what we this is this all okay is of course not very impressive. Like this is not. That's logical. A, this is not a function. This this is something you can do with Google Apps Script as well. But if we go back to this to this problem we had with um, this document, mm -hmm. let's go to to my function and run it. If if I download this whole file, you can see it's from Wikipedia. It's quite slow to download. Let's save it here. And if you probably can see it, and when I put it in my screen, it's like 100 yeah. megabytes. So it's 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 a very big map. Okay, I put a map Great Britain here. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> um, when I run this and I add it to 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 drive, it will work. It just takes a while. I go to my recent files here. Oh, you can see I, I did it before. You can see this file, and it says very nicely it's 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 ten. Right. Yeah. So this is something that's really not working. Now what I what I what I want to do now is to actually do this from Firebase, and I will show you some code I have created for it, because let's see for the for the time being I think we manage it. Go to my functions, uh, rename it to index four. So if you open this file, you see I've I have added a lot more um, modules here, and I've I've been testing two things. I've been testing some authorization and some credential stuff mm -hmm. to actually do some authenticated calls from cloud functions. These were too, so it might be nice for another time. But I was thinking this is maybe not necessary at all. And I had this answer the fetch function here, where I I was thinking I can pass the token I guess from Google Apps Script yeah. like this OAuth token, yeah. and use it in my function to do an authenticated call to Google Drive. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when I when I have my request, I put the token in there, mm -hmm. I give a file name, and I give a URL as well in the parameters. Then it should be able to to add Google Drive and fetch the file and send it back to me. So I've been mm -hmm. I've been trying this yesterday and doing some stuff, but it works. So I will show you the code how it, this will look like in a in a cloud function. So we require uh, uh, three modules that are um, important here. You can ignore the other ones for now. Four modules because request is also very important. Uh, the Google module. These are the Google APIs, and it contains all these drive fans. Uh, all Google APIs that are available. Yeah. It's just a note um, package of it. The Google Auth, it's the Google Authorization Library. You need this to create an OI2 client. Mm -hmm. um, and you need the request function here. And this is needed to do an external request. One thing I should mention for Cloud Functions and also Cloud Functions for Firebase, to be able to do an external request, you have to be on a paid plan. Right. So. Actually, I always go on the, this is the Spark plan, so this is not mm -hmm. working now. And I'm going to switch to another uh, project, which I called Gas Fetch. And it's on a Blaze plan. And actually, I always go to Blaze plan. On my testing environment, the pace you go is really low for mm -hmm. now. So I'm not worrying too much about it. There is a, a plan in between that's 25 a month. But I'm not spending 25 on the Blaze plan right now. So just to underline that, um, if you're wanting to fetch external files, then you, you won't be able to do it on the free. You need to. No. 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 That's, that's right. Good to know. That's that, yeah. That's good to know. But people have been asking to to pay for Google Apps Script to uh, get these extra limits as well. So yeah. I think the solution lies a bit in you can pay for. For the flame, it's not too much if you have a project on here and have some functions running. I think it's a pretty good deal, actually. So, but, do you do you roughly know how much? How how is it quoted in terms of external files? Is it the the payload size or is it the number of requests? It's the it's the number of bytes that are streamed through the right. network. 
that, that okay. I know of. And what I what I what I know is that if if it's sent in between Google's uh, servers, that it's not counted. But someone okay. might 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 correct me on that. But as far as I know, that that inter internal ingression, how you mm -hmm. call it, is um, is free. So it's I, I think passing the data from Drive to Firebase and stuff like that is, is still free. It's just the yeah. outgoing traffic that's that's being yeah. charged. So for here we're going to uh, to do the same thing as well. Firebase uh, init. Firebase use. I think we have to. Um, uh, to to change to to another function to another project here, cast fetch. So to to get back to to the whole process, when we when we go to um, when we when we call this function, at first we take the token from our call, which is the, which is sent by by the script. We want to know a file name. Then we create a, an authorization um, method here, and we create an OR2 client. And the only thing that's actually needed here is this OR2 client set credentials and put in the access token. This is this is needed to actually make your um, Google API do the, the call with, with the proper authentication. So I have to figure out what's what I really needed here, but this is something I, I found out yesterday. Then you add the file metadata. This is this is actually also just borrowed from some examples on the Google documentation and the media. And I found out that you can actually stream your uh, results right into the body of the media that you upload to Drive, because this is actually the request, and request is a node command to get the contents of a URL. So this is. The very simple the request actually okay. makes yeah. makes a stream and it streams it right into uh, the Google Drive uh, mm -hmm. body, and then we call Drive files create uh, resource the media uh, ID. We authorize it with the R2 client we created. If everything is fine, then we send back the file ID mm -hmm. we get from the the Drive call, and this is a bit different than you are used to in in Google Apps Script, but this whole syntax and how you how you create these these uh, calls is very well described. I think you're also mm -hmm. in, the, in the documentation. So when we deploy this function, Firebase functions, uh, Firebase deploy. Sorry, only functions. So we're going to deploy this function to my new project. We don't have to really wait for it here. I see my answer, the fetch file is right here. This is the URL. Mm -hmm. I always copy it from this part. We have put the URL here in our URL fetch app. So the URL fetch app is actually fetching my function. Yeah. It, it sends some URL parameters like the URL I want to take. Yeah. This is the URL of this image. The OR token of the script app. I'm doing a get root folder to get the proper scopes here, mm -hmm. and I do. Uh, I call it a image dot But for now, for it, I will call it Martin demo. And get context text is not really needed, um, mm -hmm. but I want to lock the ID of the file. So. Mm -hmm. It should be when I say URL fetch. I actually, I say to my function here: you have this URL. Put it on drive for me and give me back the ID. Yeah. So when I do this fetch from Firebase functions, and I uh, let's look if I, if it's deployed. Yes, it's deployed now. So I will start it. And while this is running, it's nice to actually show here some logs. As you can see, this is some real logging of functions yeah. that are being called. So actually, we should see. I mean, it's a little bit, yeah, here it goes. Function execution started, so my function mm -hmm. is called. And here it says the file go. name. Oh, it says my token as well. I was logging it for some demonstration, and some debugging purposes. It's still in there. So is that in the function 
script. Yeah, to, yeah. To I did some console logs here. See, Go ahead. if I yeah. do some console logging here, then you can yeah. see it locked in here. So you can take a live a live view on how your functions are running. I see it's ready. So when everything went right, we should have an ID here in the logs. And here it is. We okay. have a file ID. And if it's OK, then we need to have a new file in here. Martin demo. Martin demo here. Yeah, here it is. And you see the file size is 103. Mm -hmm. So this is something that works. And this is the function put it in there. And actually, we can go go ahead and do our Google Apps script stuff with the file yeah. um, and just be where we are comfortable with, but have this hard work done by the Firebase function. So I, I covered a bit like setting it up. Um, yeah. I wanted to show you this editor because the whole environment is ready to go for, mm -hmm. for deploying functions. And I have seen some questions in the Google Apps Script community as well. For what environment should I use? How do I set it up? But mm -hmm. I would say there is something there for you. That's great. Well, I've got the live show to do now. Um, but, yeah. um, <laughs> but thanks, because that opens up so many ideas in my head in terms of what to do. And I think the way you've led um, us through a project and the kind of the tips you've given us along the way will certainly, um, I think, make it a lot easier for um, other people in the community to, to start having a play with as well. I hope so. I'm sorry. I I see it's 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 15 minutes longer than I expected. <laughs> oh, so this is what I get paid for the edit. <laughs> ah, perfect. I don't get paid. <laughs> you should talk to people. <laughs>
uh, you, you use JavaScript to write in Node, so that's very handy for us app scripters because it's what we know. Um, you create a, an app which is able to react to being uh, woken up in the ways that we talked about before. And it just simply does what, whatever activities it's supposed to do. And it's it's uh, pretty straightforward. There's two things that make up an app. The, one is the, the code itself, which is usually in index.js. And the second thing is what's called the package.json. And what that does is to describe the things that your app is going to use. Because when you, st when you, when you deploy a cloud function, not only does it copy your code from your app to the virtual machine, ob to, to the object that we just looked at, it also creates a, a good instance that's got all the packages installed that you're going to need. So you can see here the four things that I'm dependent on um, are Google Maps and a couple of other things as well. So when I deploy it, it installs Node. It also goes off to find these modules in what's called the NPM registry, which is where people put code that they want to share out to, to others. And it pulls that into your Node instance or your Node implementation and builds something that's just got the things you need, your code plus the things it's dependent on. So that's that, that's that's how implement that's how deployment of cloud functions work. And so how to get deployed is you start with your source code. Now the way I do it is 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 to automate it. I've got a small script that goes off and gets that my latest code from from GitHub. And then it uses this command that we're looking at here, this this deploy command to copy the to copy my source code along with my package.json which then the cloud function deployment manager builds into an instance of node with all the things I need in it. So where it's going to put it is you can see this GCF hell place that I have. That's a, that's a, a folder, if you like, on cloud storage, which you can see here. And that's where it's going to put it. Uh, may I interrupt for of course, yeah. a, a quick point on your, on your repository? Um, uh, I think I mentioned. I think I remember someone mentioning about the cloud functions that there's a way that um, they can sync to your GitHub repository, so you can work however you mm -hmm. want to work with GitHub, and then on the on the Google side they'll sync, so you don't have to do any of that direct pulling. Uh, are you aware yes. of that? In fact, in fact, there's a there's a Git version that's private in the Google Cloud world. So what that means is if you've got code that you don't want to share publicly, you don't want to be on GitHub. That's fine because you can just create it directly in the in, in the cloud console, and your code stays there. Or alternatively, you can cause it to um, to notice. You can link it with your GitHub account, your GitHub repository, I should say, and it will synchronize any changes that you make in that back to itself. The option of keeping it private or not. I, I, all my stuff is always open source, so I, I don't do it that way. But this that would be another way of doing it. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Okay. So, how did it get executed? Well, there was four ways of doing it. In this particular example, then we are. I'm using the the HTTP POST method. So essentially, I I, I post something at a URL. The URL is defined by the cloud functions. Each cloud function has got its own URL, and I send to it some arguments uh, as a as a POST package, which is what I'm doing here. So on the left-hand side, of these are the things I want to pass over to um, the cloud function, just as you would if you were calling google.script.run or something, you would pass it some arguments. And on the right-hand side, I'm just doing a regular URL fetch to the cloud function's URL and passing it the package that I think it needs to be able to run. So very straightforward as well. In a way, you can think, it almost, think of it almost exactly the same as from the client calling google.script.run. But of course, you can also call it from the server as well. OK, so um, just for this example, we're going to use Google Maps. Now, the thing about Node is it doesn't have a DOM like a typical JavaScript web app would have. 
So what that means is that you can't just use Google Maps in, in a cloud function because you because Node doesn't have a DOM. But there is a cut down version of Google Maps available, um, which which you can get by the command that I'm showing here. And you can look at that up and see how it works. So this npm install at Google Maps would install that package into your Node um, instance. And then you would start to use it by these commands that we're looking at here. So there's another thing which is quite useful because it's actually um, takes a little bit of time to deploy stuff to the cloud. And of course, you want to test it before you install it. So there's a thing called a simulator that runs locally. So it runs in your local node instance that you'd be using to test all this with. And you can make it deploy just as you would to the cloud, except you're deploying it locally. And you can pass it a message just like I did on the previous one, except all you're really doing is calling the simulator. And that will run it just as if it had run in the cloud. So you can do all your testing without going anywhere near deployment. And then, of course, you would use it as part of a, of a workflow. What we're going to look at in a minute is a whole bunch of apps that are all working together. And one of its one of the, the the steps in the process is to call a Google Cloud function, which is the one that we're going to look at there. So you can really build in a workflow consisting of one or more cloud functions, all of which are, if you like, microservices that are really just designed to do a little thing. So instead of creating a, a monolithic app that does all kinds of stuff and runs out of quota and everything else, you can create um, microservices that are all joined together somehow. Okay. So we're going to look at um, this example. We're going to look at actually uses a, a cache, the, the cache to communicate between each other. So it does that by cooperatively updating data, which, which it then subscribes to changes on. And then as a result of it does various things. So we'll, we'll get to the demo, I think, now. I was going to look at the, the cloud console, but it seems that this, oh, no, here it is here. We've still got it. So this is the cloud console, and this is the storage bucket that contains my, uh, my cloud function. So if I wanted to deploy it, I'll, I'll, I'll just deploy it right now so you can see how easy it is. I have a little script that does it. What's it called? Um, So these are the commands involved in deploying a cloud function. We looked at them in the in the slides a minute ago. So I'm going to run that. Um, so it's gone off to Git to get the latest version of the source code. Of course, it was up to date. Uh, and now it's deploying the function to my cloud storage bucket. And the URL, what you're seeing up there, the URL is actually derived from, from the name that you're seeing there. So what's going to happen is eventually another version of this function is going to appear in the storage bucket. I mean, it may take a, a few minutes, but so in the meantime, let's go over and take a look at the, at the demo. So what we have here, this is a, a funny little app that's supposed to be demoing a few things. So we've got a, we've got a, a spreadsheet which has got a, an add-on running in it and what it does is to generate random pubs in, an, in a particular area so I'm just going to start it off and we'll see what happens so we're looking at city crawl which is here so what's happening is that uh, you can see those pubs arriving so we'll stop that for a minute and I'll just let it go and actually talk about what's actually happening um, is that the app script that's running in the background is randomly asking that cloud function that we looked at to come up with pubs that are within a particular area and it does that by using google maps so so it's doing it randomly it's supposed to be kind of simulating imagine that you've got people who who want to participate in a pub crawl if you don't know what that is that's where you go between pubs and get drunker and drunker as you as you go between each pub. And this is supposed to be simulating people suggesting them. So it's doing it, it's not doing them, um, 
you know, one after the other, it's doing them at random intervals, and that's why it's taking a little bit of time between each one to, to make it a little, a little bit more realistic. So what then happens is that each time that it's got a certain number of pubs that are that are unallocated, it assigns them to, to a pub crawl, in other words, a group of pubs, um, and then it plots a route, a route between each of these pubs. So it's been doing that as we've been talking. You can see it's generated quite a few. So I'm just going to stop it to, just for fun. So now if we go over to, um, let's see, let's go over to here. And we're reading the data that's been generated by the Google Cloud function. So that's all this stuff here. I won't, we won't look at it. There's loads of it. Uh, and now if we go over to a maps client. So this maps client is using the same um, data that we just looked at. So we can see the three pub crawls that we saw in the spreadsheet have arrived here somehow. So we can pick one. You can see that it's plotted the route between them. And there's stuff down the side and another one and so on. So that's, that's kind of pretty much all I wanted to show you because the, 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 the objective here is to look at how you can use cloud functions to glue together microservices that together make up quite a sophisticated app. That's it. Any questions? Yeah, I was just going to mention, I like how you highlighted microservices. Um, I can see we're leveraging cloud functions for many types of microservices to help things along, which you say helps out with the quota demands from Google Apps Scripts. So I think that was a very good point. Not um, it's not just, it's actually not just the quota. The quota is, is useful, but you know, they might change that one day and there won't be a quota problem. But the, the issue is not, not so much about the quota, although that's useful. It's mainly about the fact that you've created reusable services that you can pull together in lots of different ways. So, you know, what, what what I've done here is kind of a fairly trivial example, but yet there's six apps that are cooperating in this to, to, to make this happen, and some of them are cloud functions and some of them are not. Um, and it's the ease of reusing stuff that you've already written to be able to create sophisticated apps without too much work. I think that's the key here and, and, yes. and the, the, the key enabler here. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thought I had was with Node.js, which I've – gone into a few times, but not extensively. Um, I do like a browser base. Um, Cloud9, C9.io is something that I've used. And I think Real has used that a lot. Uh, so that's a nice uh, browser experience to work so, with Node.js. So that's exactly what I'm using. The, the, what we're looking at here is the code for the cloud function in Cloud9. Rio also, um, in, the, in the clip we just recorded, there's um, a long online editor um, that's available from. So if you go, Bruce, if you're able to go to the um, command line from the, the console project, there's a, a button um, just above the, that command line um, that, open, that allows you to browse some some of the, the function files. So so here's um, the source code that I've got into now um, for, I don't know if it's the same one, but for something that's for something else. Um, so, you know, my code is, is present in GitHub and also locally here, so I can go in here and edit if I want to. The, the other thing that I think is very important is that we've only looked at the way of, at the, at the invocation of cloud functions by hitting a URL. But you know, yeah. you can update a, a, an object in, in in a store, which makes it waking up as well, which is fantastic. Because now you've got now you've got a way of um, automatically invoking a cloud function if you ever change it, if if you, if something else changes something, which is which is really good too. Yeah.